Hi, and welcome to Underground Video Network's Behind the Counter. Mike Boroff here, as with me always is Richard Ketterjohn. Hello. It's been a little while since you've seen our shiny faces, so we've got a lot to cover. We've got some reviews, we've got some shout outs, and you might be noticing there's a little set rearranging, so stay tuned. Hi, and welcome back. Mike, just where are we? <laughs> uh, we're in my garage. <laughs> What's, what happened was, is uh, part of the reason why we haven't been able to do a show recently, life. You know, this is a love, a hobby, a passion of ours, but it's not something, you know, that's paying the bill. So when real life comes a calling, you got to do it. You got to do it. Um, we finally got a chance to get together. You'll notice, yes, this is not where we normally film at Alter Ego Comics in Lima, Ohio. This is my garage. Uh, that's because I think they've probably been closed for like a couple hours now. It's a little, it's a little in the wee hours. So that's how much you people mean to us. <laughs> I'm staying up late to bring you stuff that you really probably don't care about hearing from me. But Rich, we got a, we got a lot to go over. Yeah. Um, quick shout outs. Uh, we had a great time at a bunch of the shows yes. we've been to. Uh, Space Summit City. We got down to Gem City. Yeah. Everything's been good. I hope you've been liking our weekly coverage. Mm -hmm. We've been having a bunch of stuff. We had Free Comic Book Day. We went everywhere. Oh, we love Free Comic and Book Day. And there's still one more footage coming from that. So that's going to be on this episode, hopefully, at our segue uh, from yeah. uh, World's Greatest Comics. Speaking of Free Comic Book Day, Bearded Batman, I'm coming for you next year. That's all I got to say. Bearded Batman, calling you out. And then there's a bunch more shows coming up in the next yeah. about month. Oh, um, convention season is nowhere near over yet. Uh, first up, um, actually this weekend, uh, June the 29th, 30th, and July 1st will be Baycon, yeah. which we went to last year, and um, we'll be doing some little bit of coverage. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, I have a panel that I'm going to be on on Saturday night, so stop by if you're in the Baycon or Columbus area or whichever. Um, we're heading down to uh, Pack Rat Comics. Um, Ernie Hudson. Ernie Hudson. And then a bunch of different artists will be there because if you can't go out to that other show out there on the West Coast, uh, who wants to go there? Come no. on down to Pack Rat. We'll really? Be down I mean, it's, there. It's, oh, I'm going to wait two hours in line to see that one guy and two hours in line to buy that one toy that's an exclusive here that'll be on eBay in a week. Bah. I don't care. Okay. That's all the stuff coming up. There's even more shows after that in August. Oh, so much shows. And then in September, and then everywhere else, uh, Cincinnati Expo is on its way fast, too. So yeah. who knows? Uh, we'll be everywhere and anywhere. So Yeah, don't be surprised if you see us tooling around. So like we said, it's been a little while since we've gotten to do a show together, so that means there's been a bunch of stuff that we've read or played or just geeked out over. And guess what? You're going to hear about it. Rich. Okay, first up is I want to mention the uh, Spider-Man crossover event of the summer, which isn't really being played up. No, it very downplayed. Um, this is actually the Spider-Man of the original Marvel Universe, the 616 Universe, mm -hmm. crossing over with the new Spider-Man of the Ultimate. This isn't a time travel book. This is a... I have to go out and pick this one up. That threw me when I first saw the cover was, is I thought it was the Ultimate Spider-Man's Peter Parker forwarding into time to the new Spider-Man. I'm like, no, let, let dead dogs lie. Don't... I know people want that Peter Parker act. Don't cheese it out like that. But no, I, I really not, did. It's not. It's actually it's the, our Peter Parker. You know the six one six whatever the kids are calling these universes. The six one six. <laughs> six one six, yo. But uh, crosses over. Um, he's fighting Mististro and mm -hmm. going across, doing all this stuff. So the story is just now picking up. Uh, there was another 
little teaser out where they're unmasking each other, which I thought was weird, but you know, that's in the next issue, supposedly. <laughs> I know, I know, it's just kind of creepy, but uh, but that's my, uh, I really enjoyed this. I mean, mm -hmm. it's really, hopefully will be a good story in the long run. The first issue, I liked it. I really liked yeah. it, and the art was good, so mm -hmm. uh, what you got? What I got first up for me was Action Comic Books number 10. I liked this one a lot. I mean, a lot. I have, ever since, you know, the new 52, I have been following Action Comic Books, and I've really been liking it. I love this one. For many reasons. First of all, uh, the idea that they show... I got confused at first when I was reading it. Because I see Clark reading this article about a child killer. And I see him dash and I see him grab the t-shirt and the jeans. And he goes to, to get the guy, right? Which I love. And I'm like, oh, well, is this like a back in time again? Like five years ago? Because he's got the armor now. What's going on? But then you come to find out what I really liked was... He has two outfits for, for, it almost seems like he has two, the two outfits for two separate occasions. Like, this is what I really liked, and I'll probably catch hell for this. I like the fact that when it comes to down-home metropolis crime busting, bad guys, bank robbers, you know, stuff like that, he's still the everyman. He's got the jeans, he's got the t-shirt, he's got the boots, he's one of the people. But when it comes to the Justice League, world crisis and stuff, suit up. I like that idea. I like that in his mind he makes the distinction that I'm still a man of the people for the people, but I'm also still a symbol for the world. I, I like the hell oh, out yeah. of that. I like the part with the Justice League in there too. I love the interaction with the Justice League because we get to see that Clark really does feel remorseful that he can't do more. That he has all these powers, he should be doing this. But at the same time, it's Batman and Flash who say there's a line that you cannot cross. Once you cross that line, it's over. You, you've become what you hate. And Clark doesn't like it. And I say Clark, not Superman. I make the distinction because you can feel that it's Clark feeling remorseful. Clark understands. I can't cure these diseases. I can't cure drought in India. I can't do this. I can't put myself in that position without crossing the line, and he doesn't like it. The other thing I really liked about it, and spoiler alert, was the death of Clark Kent. <laughs> and here's the big thing I liked about the death of Clark Kent was, you see this cover? Do you see anywhere on here the death of Clark Kent? No, not at all. It is very rare anymore that I read a comic book that surprises me, especially, I'm sorry, DC, because they'll slap here's your end right on the cover. No, I'm sitting there reading it and like, building blows up. Next thing you know, there's the, you know, here's the other thing I really like was you have the death of Clark Kent. There was really kind of no way, I like the way they worked the story. There was no real way around it. He was caught in a blast and without making people, you know, edgy or weird just yet, he, he had to die. But what I really liked was, and this was so, such good character moments, was the, I'd say wake. The wake oh, at the yeah. very end, all of Clark's co-workers and friends, which, let me, let me jump back a few pages. The other thing I really liked, I'm sorry, I'm getting all over the place. At the very beginning, you see Clark, Lois, and Jimmy hanging out in Clark's apartment. One page, and you know why that meant so much to me? You got to see that these people weren't just co-workers, that Clark wasn't just the milk toast, mild-mannered, you know, reporter in the background. These were friends, which makes the end so much more touching because here you have all of Clark's coworkers and comrades telling how much he really meant to them. And in the last page, as Jimmy and Lois are walking out and they're being remorseful and saying how much they wish Clark was here to see this, and Lois says, I just wish Clark was here, Superman is looking down, and you can, it was great art because you really felt like, Oh, <laughs> it was it was great character moment. Like I said, so far I've been really liking action comic books. Love issue ten. It's a good. I would even almost say standalone issue. If you haven't read anything of action comic books, is new line yet? Ten is a fantastic place to jump off. Yeah, or actually to start on. To start on, yes. Because it's like starting something new. Yes, it is. It really is. Action comic books ten is like I hate to say it, like one point two. 
Or zero before or it zero. happens. Oh, God. <laughs> zero before it happens. Yes. Let's don't get in there yet. No. We'll, we'll probably talk about it in two months. <laughs> yes. We'll be bitching and complaining about it, too. Uh, we'll start over. What should we say? Uh, Watch men little mini series. Big controversy. Big controversy. It seems cares. like it's become the whipping boy of the internet here lately. We had to mention it because I really, really like the Silk Spectre. I did too. Let's, okay, we're going to lose some people here, but we're going to come out right now and say it. So far, let's see, we've seen uh, The Watchmen, uh, The Silk Spectre, and you The mean, Comedian. I mean The Miniman. The Miniman, or The Miniman, yes. We liked them. I liked them. I didn't like The Comedian, though. I don't like the comedian anyhow. That, that's, yes. That, I don't like the character, so I couldn't really get into it. I read the first issue. Yes. I probably won't buy the rest of that because probably, yeah. I just don't like the comedian. Which is great. I mean, you disliked it for the right reasons. Yeah. You disliked it because you just didn't like it. Yeah, I don't You like didn't dislike comedian. it because, ah, oh, Alan Moore doesn't have anything to do with it and he hates it and blah. Oh, who's that? Oh, wait. That big bearded crazy guy. Oh, the one that always rambles all the time like us? No. Yeah. <laughs> Grant, I love Alan Moore. I really do. I like his work, but I, I hate the idea that. People are bashing a comic book because of one person's opinion. Granted, he is the opinion. I want to see him do Judge Dredd again. Oh, that'd be awesome. Oh, I'm sorry. I digress. That's, that was way back in the day. But yes, the Silk Spectre. Oh, I got four words about Silk Spectre the, before Watchmen. Darwin Cook and Amanda Connor. Go. Yeah, that was just, God. The art is just incredible. Oh, God, Darwin Cook. This. <laughs> God, I love Darwin Cook. Just, just amazing. The whole writing, the whole concept. I mean, concept you actually understand why she yes. with her mom. It makes sense. Here's what it boils down to. Watchmen, the comic book slash movie, is a fantastic story. Great. It ranks up there. But that's a chunk of pie in the whole universe. Yes. This takes place back here. Yeah, we know from the movie that there's a history. Why is it taboo to talk about that history? Especially it's such a lush and wonderful history. I mean, you could just say it's Charlton, but I mean... Uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I digress again on the whole Watchmen thing. You know. Yeah. It wasn't original creation. Sorry. In it's my mind. It's true. Yeah. But that's me. <laughs> yeah. But we were going off on a whole other topic. But no one complains when they do like past early stories of like Spider Man, blue, white, red. I mean, a big graphic novel where they reprint the origin like a thousand times. Yeah. I mean, if you. If or you, or the, the thing that comes out July the third. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next up. Moving on. <laughs> you know I had to talk about it. The crossover you didn't think would ever happen. But IDW did it? But IDW did it. And I'm sorry, but I'm going to say it my way. Doctor Who meets Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love Star Trek The Next Generation a lot. But 25 years? 25 years. The Doctor gets top billing to me. I'm, I'm going to put it in my box under the D's. But I digress. Fantastic. Loved it. Um, the first issue, a little slow, just because there was a great story build. You know, you they don't just throw it in your face. Here's the Borg. Here's the Cybermen working together. Blah, in your face. That really makes sense. It really makes sense because, let's face it, people have been making that comparison for years. Like, oh, the Borg are nothing but Cybermen. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then finally somebody said, you know, exactly. They said, yeah, put them together, you know. <laughs> Fantastic. The story was great. You know, you get that slow build, you know. The, uh, there was a Federation planet. And it's just, like I said, it's, it's slow in that they, it's character build. They don't go in your face. This is a, a no-name world with no-name, you know, people you don't know, but their world's under attack. And then you see the war, but then you see the Cybermen. And then we flash over to the Doctor doing his crazy thing with Amy and Rory, you know, back there in uh, ancient Rome times, which... You can't do a story with Doctor Who and Rory and not show a little, yeah. a little Rome, you know. And then at the yeah, end... they're on vacation again. And they're on vacation <laughs> again, yes. Uh, the other thing I love was the art. Dear God, this was fantastic. It bored to me, and I'm going to, like I said, my opinion, borderline Alex Ross and the painting of it and the, the life likeness a little less detail than Alex does just a little less it's, it's got that very beautiful watercolor look to it and it's just it's like when you when you look at the characters they spent a lot of time on facial you know what I mean it's not just you know there's been some doctor who's that way 
There have been some. This this person took the time and was like, well, he'd be a little confused, so we're gonna. Hmm? Beautiful, loved it. This one definitely definitely picked this one up. Now I'm gonna do a quick quick shout out. Uh, Mars Attacks is returning. Another IDW. We like IDW. This yes, is we do. This week. We are. Yeah. I didn't buy all the covers, but it was unique that they actually had the cards yes. on the covers, and you. Could... I remember the cards. Oh yeah, that's how hot we are. We're throwing off sirens. <laughs> Tornado warning. Tornado warning. It is that season. So, um, if at any Mars moment now. No, it's Mars Attack. Holy shit! Run! But <sighs> okay. Let's We're cool. They. We're okay. in Delphus. They don't care. They're fucking <laughs> right to Lima. Okay, Mars Attacks. Though, as I was saying, uh, IDW picked the book back up. Yep. Uh, and this was from Tops originally back in yeah. the '90s, which did a nice run. I had and to, I yeah. always loved Mars so Attacks. Did I. I mean, the movie with Tim Burton that directed and stuff. It was. It good. had. Mo it had some good. It stayed true to the cheesy campiness of the the idea of the Mars Attacks. But uh, like I said, uh, pick this up if you get a chance. I wouldn't buy all the covers. I yeah. mean, I thought the cover gimmick was just a little too much. Yeah. I know I kind of wanted to do it, but uh, if you enjoyed the original Top Series, you would gladly enjoy this because this takes place back in the 60s mm -hmm. and kind of explain, explains why the evasion happened and everything. Yeah. So, not bad. Pick it up. Okay. My next review, I have nothing. No. Um, speaking of like the last review with my Doctor Who Star Trek crossover, something I didn't think I'd ever see. This is something else I didn't think I'd ever see. It was the Doctor Who, the Eternity Clock download for the PlayStation Network. Finally, a, a game, a PlayStation game of Doctor Who. For years I have been teased and tormented that all these fantastic games are available over there. Britain, the UK are playing PlayStation. That sonic screwdriver I have came from over there. We got, <laughs> why? Not right out here? Because evidently, they're screaming. Here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, when I read about it, I got excited, but I was like, it's not going to happen. Got on the PlayStation Network. Holy crap, there it is. Worth the download. Uh, it is a downloadable game. Uh, fantastic game. First thing I have to say about it is it wasn't something that was just slapped together. Like, oh, Doctor Who's huge? Let's throw something together and put it on the PlayStation Network for money. No, here's how cool it is. Matt Smith not only lends his voice... He did the mocap for it. Wow. I've seen it. I saw the pictures of him in the suit in the TARDIS doing his... <laughs> and the graphics on it are phenomenal. They're really good. The, the one complaint I do have to say about the game is it, it, it's a side-scroller. And it has a very uber game or app feel. You know, being that it's just a side-scroller, you know, there's no 3D... You know what I mean? Oh, okay. That being said, it's still got the graphics on it. The backgrounds are fantastic. There's a lot of little special Easter eggs. Oh, wow. There's even a Tom Baker warehouse that oh, you can geez. catch in the distance. The one thing that I really liked about it was I liked the way they do the control scheme where uh, your left thumb button controls the doctor, the right controls the sonic screwdriver. Full hand, and it's not just point and click. I like this mechanic. When you want to go to open a door, what looks like an oscilloscope pops up on the screen and you have to com you got to work that little sucker just right and match it to pop that door. And it's just like, to me, it's like, this is what I imagine like the doctor seeing in his head when he's using a sonic screwdriver. Oh, wow. It's fantastic. Um, cameos, uh, it is a two-player game, and who might you say, ask, is the second player? River Song, who oh. I believe is still voiced by Alex Kingston. Cool. The people who worked on her... Graphics, man, I love Alex Kingston. I don't, I'm going to go on record saying I don't care how old that woman is. She's flipping hot. I don't care that it's just because she's on The Doctor and she's Ripper Song. That is an attractive woman. The one that's on that game, not. Come on, people. I know what you're capable of. I have been confused before. Like, man, that, she's really hot. Oh, that's a game. Ooh, I'm confused. There's no distinction here. She comes walking on the stage. She's got the mannerism, but she's like, yeah. Kudos. The other little side thing that I like about that game is it's not a game unless there's collectibles. Uh, throughout the game, uh, there's the Rivers collectibles, which are pages of the diary. And you're thinking, well, what would the doctor collect? Hats. I love it. Boulders, the Fez is one of the first ones. And there's like, oh God, 
I gotta spoil this one. One of the hats, hats he collects is the miner's mask from the episode with David Tennant when they're, uh, oh God, I'm sorry, I apologize. It's hot, I don't remember. Uh, come burn with me, come burn with me. Uh, the one getting ready to crash into the sun. Yeah. Oh. The, the, the possessing force is possessing everybody. But anyways, it's that helmet. And you hear the doctor, every time you click on the look at it, you hear, burn with me, burn with me. No, I'm only joking. It's just like, it was so cool to hear. Hey, I love hearing uh, uh, Matt Smith say David Tennant lines. It always gives me a tickle. <laughs> I loved it. Fantastic game. If you get a chance to, PlayStation Network, Doctor Who, the, uh, the Eternity Clock, look it up. Worth the download. Cool. Um, one more from me. This has been on top of my read for uh, the New 52, Red Hood and the Outlaws. I know a lot of people really say something, but if you're new to the book, this has gone space. Mm -hmm. Basically, um, they're going off, and then it's, um, how do I want to say it? They were like, the one alien comes to her, it was like, supposedly like the original from the Teen Titans. It was like her trainer or whatever. Oh, okay. I was going to look that up before I went here, but I couldn't remember. But he like appears and says they need him back on the ship. And they have like the Omega Men or whatever mm -hmm. fraction of, with the new 52. They didn't really state that per se, but there's a bunch of different aliens. And they have to go back to her home planet. And they drag along Red Hood and Arsenal. Nice. So, and Red Hood's girlfriend, or date, got yeah. sucked into it. Oh, nice. So there's going to be this other character that's disappeared out of nowhere that's just drugged along. So it's kind of weird. It's like a Doctor Who episode. So there's a very good chance we might see a panel where uh, Starfire interacts with her mom. And her mom's like, what are you wearing? What is with this? What is uh, you're on Earth for a month and you're looking like this. Yeah, what the? But, but uh, actually, uh, Starfire's... Uh, sister will probably be mm. in the next issue way they kind of lead into this and stuff because there's like she's doing something back on the home planet just like before like taking it over and right. stuff so they're picking up some of the storyline from the old dc universe okay. and running with it in a whole new direction nice okay i've got we've got time for one more review this is a little different we haven't really done one like this yet it is the big bang party game cool. we just picked this up this is this is so much fun um, I don't want to downplay anybody making this comparison, but it's very similar to the very popular game called Apples to Apples, except it's got the, uh, the Big Bang Theory twist to it. The concept of the game is very simple. I love the fact that the instruction page is like one page. That's it. All you need to know is you have a group of people. Uh, take turns being the dealer or whatever. The dealer sets down a topic card. And that topic could be anything like uh, things that go well together. And there's always a like cute little quote underneath it. And it's everybody's job. They've got a, a handful of seven cards, things that go well together. They have to play a card that they feel best sums up that and, and play it. So like, what was the one here on the back? Uh, Hilarious Battles is the title. And then they show here what battle, okay, uh, this was one where you get to play two cards. Hilarious battle. A giant rabbit, where Raj says, oh, forget giant ants, what about giant rabbits? And the other person plays a horny engineer. I'm a horny engineer, Leonard. I never joke about math or sex. Now let's face it, that'd be a funny battle. Giant rabbit, horny engineer, hilarity. Each card is jam-packed full of pictures and quotes. It's, it's a fun game. It's a game that you don't have to be a fan of or know anything about the show to really enjoy. Cool. You have to be a geek though, because you don't even have to be a geek. It's, just, it's just, a fun game. Just play it. Yeah, and this is a great game to get people together. I really did. We got a chance to break this in a couple nights ago, me and my family. Hilarity ensued. It was the only, the only problem with this game is you're laughing too hard at the cards. You get the card, it has your topic, and it has the picture and a quote from the, the, the show. And it just seemed like every five minutes you're like, <laughs> wait, 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 give me, give me a second. That's the only problem is it, it was too much fun. If you get a chance to, this, like I said, is a great, great excuse to get your friends together. This is a fantastic game. You get a chance to pick this up. I highly recommend this one. And it's great to get away from the TV video games for a change, you know. <laughs> yeah. Look at this. Boy, I can, I can feel this. I can touch this. This is real, you know. Game no kidding. This, where's, there's the plug. I, there's no Ethernet. How do, where's the Wi-Fi? 
No, real game, real cards, real good time. Hey, there you go. I like yeah. that. That's about all for this episode. Yeah, yeah, no kidding, man. It just, like we said, it's been a little while since we got together. Hopefully you're going to see us on a more regular basis, whether you like it or not. falling over, you know, just be great. If you've seen my walls, it's like a cross between the Cracker Barrel and the Bat Cave. At any moment, something really deadly could fly off and like kill us and make us YouTube history. So. Okay. So, as uh, you were saying, we're going to leave that shit in. We're leaving that in.